What's up everybody? So today I'm gonna talk to you about one interesting experiment I did the other day, uh, which was testing my testosterone levels to understand if running and endurance events and training actually affect your testosterone levels. The other day I was reading on one of the image boards on fitness and health how people are scared to, let's say, do any sort of running in even, let's say, 20 or 30 miles a week because we believe that their hormone levels are gonna go down, their libido is gonna go down. So this is exploratory case and an N equals one experiment to find out if training hard and enduring over time actually stuns your testosterone. All right, so this is one of the popular studies which has been cited in so many different articles and it has been run on 15 previously sedentary males and uh, out of which five actually didn't get any decrease and the rest actually ran over let's say six months experienced decrease in serum testosterone levels and free testosterone even if a study was done on you know quite insignificant amount of people it was incited again and again and again. I have another suspect, which is a completely opposite study, uh, which was basically run on a few athletes as well. It was just a handful of them. What we did is just tested the salivary response on cortisol, which is a stress hormone, as well as, as testosterone, based on, let's say, interval, tempo runs, and just simple bodyweight circuits. And it was done on athletes who were actually endurance trained. The point is that salary, let's say, response to post-workout is always gonna increase at some point. So all these metrics basically show that, you know, after 15, 30, 60 minutes post-exercise, the testosterone started to peak, cortisol, the stress hormones started to peak. The outcomes really vary based on the individual. Again, this is a short-term study and it basically tells you that you know what happens let's say maximum after one hour of exercise here what we're looking for is really what happens in the long run. and then we have a third one compared the results of training in submaximal as well as uh, above maximum endurance exercise which is basically saying that um, perhaps it was tempo and let's say high intensity interval training or some sort of other super intense uh, perhaps VO2 max type of effort. And what we what we notice in the results is that acutely testosterone increase, both free testosterone, um, total bioavailable for both exercises. Testosterone also increased in parallels to growth hormone after both exercises. So as you can see, again, this is another one which is basically telling that, okay, on a like a really short term basis your testosterone should actually go up again there is no any clue of how that would affect you know the long-term results found also this one for example which is quite interesting and as you can see this one was done and reported in 1984 and it was done on 31 men which on average ran 64 kilometers each week which is also in the same ballpark as I'm, I was running before getting injured. And the results here were that bond testosterone and so prolactin were significantly lower than in controls after all that jazz. I wonder what were the means? I didn't really specify in this abstract at least. However, everything else remained in physiological range, meaning only testosterone free. I think one of these studies is actually why uh, it's been cited that let's say running more than you know an average folk would, which is 64 kilometers, would actually result in lower testosterone levels. Right, so now as you have some background, let's jump in into my personal experiment and just to give you some tiny little bit of background how we did it. Uh, over the last few months I've been injured, therefore I took it kind of like a backwards approach. I just noticed, you know, my I, I tested my testosterone just before getting injured and right when I'm getting back to it, so just a few months gap. I went from around 30 to 40 miles a week of running and hardcore training and CrossFit endurance type of uh, practices as well as coaching other people to virtually no running at all and still doing CrossFit endurance and still coaching people and still moving. And my testosterone metrics look like this. 
Hey, so just to show you some data, uh, this is my dashboard for testosterone projections. As you can see, uh, my latest one, which was done in January, just a couple of months ago, um, was 16.3 nanomillimoles per liter, which is a free testosterone in my bloodstream. And um, as you can see, a projection basically states that I'm just above the average. And that's exactly where like where my testosterone got as I wasn't able to exercise as much as rigorously, you know, run and uh, perform in that endurance kind of efforts. So like uh, my typical 40 to 30 miles went down to zero miles. And as you can see, even a projection on the right hand side where we have, it went from 21 nano minimals to 16, which is a really crazy jump if you think about it and that's where it was as you can see it went up as my mileage increased from last june as i was training for one of ultra marathons up until november where the ultra marathon happened and then i continued to you know kind of stupidly to train further instead of taking some time off and and doing proper off season that's where the crash happened where i got injured and then I couldn't run anymore. And that's where the downhill slope went for testosterone projection. I was still training, you know, doing CrossFit and stuff like that, and quite intensely. However, it wasn't st it wasn't the same strain for my, you know, legs and posterior chain and you know all those like different muscles which would actually impact the production of testosterone um, to keep up with that load. As you can see, and it went down by, um, that's crazy amount, I would say that's at least, so 21, that's at least 5 nanomillimoles, which, you know, it could make or break you if you compare from projections. You will see that that is. And now, as like, so what's next, basically? So I'm trying to get back to training and running, and I'm currently at 15 miles a week, and I'm thinking to up that mileage and try to retest it and see if that, you know, if it gives, if, if basically it puts me back into the same state where testosterone is much, much higher. It doesn't really debunk um, any of those studies discussed before, because it's quite anecdotal and it's again n equals one so you shouldn't take it as a fact however it still tells you that perhaps there is some sort of critical mass factor or a half-life where let's say if you would add another 10 20 miles maybe then i would experience some sort of side effect it was really surprising that actually that effect happened because what i was expecting was complete opposite that let's say if I would stop running based on all those articles and studies I read before and all those discussions I had, let's say, with bodybuilders, athletes, runners, coaches, that my testosterone would actually go up because I would be resting more and I wouldn't be exposing my body to such a shock. It was complete opposite. So again, take it with a grain of salt. I hope this was useful. And if so, give a like, share, subscribe, Show it to your friend if they're interested in that. If they're, st if they're afraid that, let's say, um, running or adding more cardio or endurance type of effort to actually decrease their gains and testosterone levels, maybe this is the answer, maybe this is what we're looking for. Because that 30, 40 mile mark is really just five, six hours of running a, a week, which might seem like crazy amount to some people. However, as you can see from my data, from my test results, uh, my testosterone actually went down as my running decreased. So I hope it was useful. Till next time.